propagation is one of the easier ways to propagate succulents, but this can be made tricky depending on your climate. Hopefully after watching this, you'll have much better success with propagating from leaf cuttings. Obviously, the first step is to harvest the leaves. Unfortunately, not just any leaf will do. The best way to do this is to start at the bottom and work your way upwards towards the healthier leaves. The other way is to harvest leaves from the flower stalks. It's best to work with fresh leaves, so do this before the flower stalk has fully bloomed. It is important to extract the leaf in its entirety, as the growing point can be found at the end of the leaf where it used to connect to the stem. Take part of the stem if you have to. Such is the beauty of working with a flower stalk, as you can do whatever you want with it and not damage the main plant. Leaves come in different shapes and sizes. You will generally find that they have two faces. The front or the ventral side and the back or dorsal side, where you generally see the spine. It differs from leaf to leaf, but generally you have to keep track of where the curvature is. So in this case, it's curving this way, so this must be the top side, and the front side, and this must be, be the rear side. This is a leaf from a black knight. The curvature is very obvious, so you would know which one is at the top and which one is at the bottom. Same goes for the rest of these leaves. There are a few ways to do it, and I'll show you how. The first method is laying it on its side. So you just stick it on the soil to keep it upright with the edge or the tip of the leaf above the soil. Some people like keeping the mare stem above the ground. Some prefer it half buried. I prefer it above the ground. The next position is facing up. So if you remember where the face is, this is the face and this is the back. So I'm just going to lay it in the soil like so. Since it is facing up, the growing tip is above the soil. The third method is facing down. This is similar to the previous position, but only the growing tip is touching the soil. So this is more obvious with leaves that have more curvature. If you lay them this way, the meristem is having direct contact with the soil. In some cases, this might stimulate the growth of roots and plantlets. But I've found, at least in my observations, that placing them in soil or direct contact with soil stimulates roots to grow more rather than the plantlet. So I prefer the meristem to be not touching the ground. The fourth method is pointing down. This is where the meristem is buried on the soil like so. Maybe people do it to save space. Maybe they have success with it. But again, my observations, and I'm not sure if it's universal to all of them, but as long as it's buried, it has no exposure to light, then roots tend to grow rather than plantlets. So I tend not to do this thing. My preference is to either start them laying on their back or on their side. And once the plantlet grows, you just stick it more under the soil. You don't have to do it exactly like I did, just do whatever works for you. Getting from here to here took me about 4-5 to five months of growth. So don't be discouraged if yours seem to be progressing slowly. These things tend to take a while.
The whole process is lengthy in terms of time, so let's break it down into phases. The first phase is what I call the drying off phase. This is when you have just freshly plucked a leaf from the stem. Since it is a fresh cut, you will need to allow the wound to callus over by keeping it dry. I would recommend leaving it out to dry for at least a week, but generally, 5 days is good enough. During this time, you don't need to lay them on the soil. In fact, this might be more preferred as this reduces the risk of infecting the fresh wounds, especially if you are unsure about your growing medium. So just lay them out in a container like so. So in my case, I would just keep all of my leaves in a container away from soil in bright shade until they start sprouting. The second phase, as you may have guessed, is marked by initial sprouting. In this phase, you, you will start seeing some tiny growth coming out from the end of the leaf. If you're lucky, you can see tiny leaves and roots coming out at the same time. But otherwise, it's not that common to see roots come out with the leaves coming out much later and vice versa. I'm as of yet unsure what causes this mismatch timing to happen. But my working theory is, if it's not exposed to enough light, like when a growing tip is buried, this stimulates the roots to grow. But then again, your experience might vary. During this time, you will want to start misting the soil to keep it moist, but not drenched. Do your misting every time the soil is looking dry. You will not want them to be too wet as this may cause rutting. You don't have to worry about missing a misting session or two as the new growth can still pull water and virus nutrients from the parent leaf. In fact, I often just not bother missing them until much later in the process when the root system has developed even more. As with the previous phase, Keep your cuttings in bright shade, away from direct sunlight as direct contact will quickly dry them out, if not fry off the delicate growth. This is also when I prefer to lay them on the soil. I simply scratch a hole in the surface for the roots to go in and lay them in there. The third phase is the growing period. This ranks high among the slowest phases, if not being the slowest phase in the whole process. Again, you will want to keep them in bright shade as the new growth is still quite delicate. It can still be quite relaxed with your misting as they still have enough to pull from the parent leaf. The fourth phase is when the parent leaf starts drying out. If this whole time you were thinking of when to start panicking, this is a good time. Since the parent leaf is about to get depleted, this is when you have to be more vigilant about keeping their moisture level up. To make things easier, I transfer them to another container so I can heavily mist the whole thing without worrying about overwatering the younger cuttings. Here's a sample container with dried out parents. As you can see, these two here are already established and are thriving. On the other hand, these two black knights are struggling. I seem to have already lost the battle with one of them. but I might still have a chance with this one. There are many ways of managing the moisture, and that might be a topic of another video. Suffice to say, if you lag behind enough, you will lose the battle. So you have to make sure that you are on top of things. The fifth phase is what I would like to call graduation. This is what you have been doing all this hard work for. The plantlet is finally established and it's no longer dependent on the parent leaf. 
it has developed its root system and is ready to move out of the nursery. You could transfer it into a new pot on its own. Or you could co-plant it with similar types of plants like I've done here. But whatever you decide to do, make sure it has enough space to spread its roots. And soon after, when they get large enough, you can move them into a bigger pot. 